real cases before a real judge. Plaintiff Nina Rue says one day as she was shopping at a grocery store, she turned away from her cart and in that moment, the defendant stole her purse. Nina claims the defendant was caught in the act on the store's surveillance tape, which Nina has in court. And she's suing for the stolen items and emotional distress. Defendant Gabriel Salome started drinking and smoking marijuana when he was 12 years old and became addicted to heroin and cocaine at age 18. Despite his addiction, Gabriel went to an Ivy League university and ended up getting his PhD. But as a result of his addiction, he has no recollection of stealing Nina's purse. Tell me what happened. Well, Your Honor, on July 11th, 2011, I was just back from a 4th of July vacation with my husband and my son. Gotten up early, I had a lot of errands to do. I'd gone to the bank gotten my son to the orthodontist and I'd gotten to the grocery store because there was no food in the fridge. So I had brought a couple of the reusable canvas bags we're all encouraged to use at the grocery store and I'd stuck them in the front of the cart, put my handbag on top of them. Usually I keep my handbag on my shoulder. Pushed it in, started doing my shopping, looked at something, turned around, came back to the cart, was horrified to discover my purse was gone. Couldn't imagine what, what could have happened, looked around, went over to customer service, and they had people check the store, check the parking lot, and they sent someone to go look at the surveillance tapes. Now, Judge, I do have a video. However, I'd like to tell you the rest of the events sure. before we watch that, please. So I talked to them about what had happened. They called a police officer who came and took a report. This is the report that the police officer it, made. Please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I received a copy of that and it showed a dark, they, they said they had seen a video with a dark haired man leaving the store with a handbag. And I was beside myself. Not only had I just lost my wallet, but I'd lost my car keys, my house keys and my husband's car keys, which were all on a keychain in there. And uh, so I went home and was really upset. I called the police in my town who were nice enough to circle the block. I was afraid somebody was gonna come drive our cars away in the middle of the night or break in when we were away um, from the house. Anyway, a couple days later, I had a call from a policeman in a different town and they had found some of my things in a car that someone had stolen. So I went down to that station and someone I was, had stolen a car. Someone had stolen a car. They your, they'd pulled them over, and there were a whole lot of different things in that car, like including that some of my you. items. Like what? Well, I'll show you. Your what honor. kind of criminal is that? Is it how many days later? Two days later. Two days later, <laughs> the criminal that stole the purse stole a car. Stole a different car, <laughs> and transfer the purse which clearly he didn't need anymore two days later. So, Your Honor. What kind of criminal is that? I used to. <laughs> Not saying it was you, sir. You have, she hadn't proven it, but whoever, this is a stupid criminal, whoever it was. Your Honor, it, it I actually, knew you'd be it a gets... criminal. The first thing you do is dump whatever it is you took. If, you, if you're taking food, you take the wrapper off and you take the food. Your Honor. We used to steal steaks out of the grocery market, right? <laughs> and, and then go door to door in the projects and sell them. Boy, they used to love us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I think we'd even take food stamps. <laughs> but the first, we used to have our own wrapping paper, though. First thing we'd do is take off the evidence of where the store was, wrap it up in some different uh, uh, wrap, and do that. You didn't have that. Wasn't you? you uh, <laughs> go ahead, ma'am. Lord have mercy. Tell me about this again. Two days later, what was in the car? All right. So here's a here's a picture of my items that were recovered in the stolen car, and here is a list of the things that were found, including in my items. In the car. And here are my actual keys, which you'll see are on the same key ring. Now, a your honor. Check. A blank check, obviously. He tried to forge my signature, Your Honor. 
the actual purse. No, that's not my purse. That's a purse that was in the car. It Somebody else's purse. <laughs> From a month earlier, probably. Lord have mercy. Your Honor, Go you'll ahead. see. He actually took people's wedding checks from a catering hall. He took a can of money for the homeless off a counter somewhere. Those things are all on the list of things that were recovered in that car. Go ahead. And it turns out that the car belonged to his wife. The woman over here said she's going to watch her purse, man. <laughs> You're not sure. We're not sure it was him. We're not sure it was him. Go ahead. It, it turns out that the car belonged to his wife, who he was separated from. And there was also recovery literature. You're stealing everything. What nailed down? You want to show I me? I want to show the video, but Your Honor, here are the complaint warrants, Hand and here are me, the please. dispositions. All right. So let me see. What, he, let me uh, see your uh, video. All right. Let's see. So there he is entering the grocery store and picking up a little cart. And there he is walking over. It's hard to see me, but I had on my bright pink mom shirt, which I brought with me today for you. <laughs> what kind of thief are you? Well, Your Honor, he's a better thief than you think because the video showed that he actually was in that store for 50 minutes looking at where the cameras were, looking oh, for a target. Oh, not a good thief at all, ma'am. You don't walk around with the purse in open view <laughs> that you've stolen. See, we got a little thief in here. He's showing you how to do it. You put it under your arm. There you go. There you go. from? Well, Your Honor, I live um, in a small town a little ways out of okay. Newark, New Jersey. Okay, all right. We need to bring you to Detroit or Chicago. <laughs> you? <laughs> you need some lessons. All right. <laughs> no, I wouldn't advocate teaching anyone how to steal. Absolutely not. Sir, let me hear from you. <laughs> If that, in fact, was me, it looks like I had a busy month last July. Um, I personally don't have any recollection of the incident. <laughs> I don't. What and does I, that you know, mean? And I'll offer an explanation as well. I mean, the first thing I want to do, to do although, is, um, is to apologize to the plaintiff in the way that I had previously. And that is, from one person to another, I'm sorry that you are enduring this, that you are uh -oh. a victim of a crime. You must up. be in rehab. No. <laughs> I can tell you this, that... That's one of the 12 steps, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't made it to the fifth step yet, though. No. Oh, you are yeah. in rehab. No. All actually, right, let me hear actually, from you. Actually, I'm not. I've been in and out of rehab. So what happened? Uh, what? From what? It's the tell truth. Me, tell Look, me about your I have a long-standing history of <laughs> substance abuse and, you know, drug, drug addiction. Okay, you know, started more, when? For tell more me. than 20 years. I started when I was 12 with alcohol and... Um, Marijuana. That's when kind of my, I, I was the younger of some cousins and they kind of turned me on to it then. You know, it wasn't until I was about 18 that I started to hit the harder stuff like heroin and wow. coke. And heroin? Yes, sir. Did you go to pills first? Or? I actually had some pharmaceutical Like opiates. Oxycontin At the type? time, they were Percocets at the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now I know, um, you know, there are Oxys and Roxys and all that. In fact, pharmaceuticals are the most abused, you know, drugs yeah. these days. Um, you know, so you started at 18 on heroin, so did yeah. you go to rehab many times? I've been in and out of detoxes and rehabs. What was your first time? The first time I was about 30 years old, the first time. You went 12 years as a dope fiend without And then on. some, and then some, and then some more. All yeah. right, so what did you do between 18 and 30? You just stole and fed your habit how? No, actually, uh, I, I managed to get an education. I really? finished second in my high school. I, fin I got, actually got an education, a scholarship to an Ivy League university where I finished top of my class. Really? Yeah. And from there, I got a, a full scholarship to a medical school where I did my MD and PhD studies. I, I technically have my medical degree. I am a physician. Um, I'll say this, and, and I think I'm, I'm proof of it, is that addiction d takes no prisoners. It doesn't discriminate whether you're white, black, rich, or poor, young or old, male, female. It just doesn't care. City or suburb, don't forget that part. Yes, sir. <laughs> City or suburb. Yeah, no, and, and, and that's something else I would like to say, is that our typical 
picture of a drug addict is, you know, a bum on the street in some city begging for change and robbing and stealing. And, and black. that's where and I black. ended up. Don't forget that part. And black. And it's true. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and the majority of addicts these days are white teenagers from the suburbs stealing off their parents' pharmaceutical pills prescribed by some doctor. And worse than that, as you know, I've been in and out of treatment. Worse, it's an epidemic, and it's killing people, and it's killing lots of people. And you know, by the grace of God, I stand here clean today. Oh. Now, when was this? This was 11? Yeah, this was last summer. You fell off the wagon for a yes, minute. Yes, I did. In fact, before I resumed my third year of medical school, I took some time to get clean. I met my wife-to-be. I stayed clean for about three years. I'm glad to hear that you're teaching such a lesson to viewers. Uh, this is very important that people know it from people who've experienced it. Not from me. People say I lecture and preach. I'm just trying to educate. But it's always good yeah, to have I'm, uh, someone. I'm, not, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm not trying to say that drugs had anything to do with getting an education and a degree. In fact, when it appeared like I was on top of the world. You know, I was getting married, I got my med medical degree, I was starting a residency, a top residency in the country, and uh, I relapsed, actually for medical reasons, but I relapsed, and it started with a drink, and it turned into ph pharmaceuticals from a hospital where I was working at, and then back to the street. And I was running the street for about eight years. You know, I've also been a victim of crime, I've been assaulted with deadly weapon, I've been, had a gun in my mouth, had a gun in my face, I've been robbed at gunpoint. I mean, that's where it leads, from the top to the bottom. And, yep. um, you know, my wife left, my family left, my wife took my daughter, and I pretty much felt like everyone needs to separate themselves from me anyway, because I'm going to make a mess of their life, too. I'm glad and, you're um, saying that. We have a lot of mothers and grandmothers, in particular grandmothers, who are taking care of those children that their drug addicted son or daughter has left with them. And then they let the son or daughter in and out of the house and feel sorry. No, you got to cut them off. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And yeah, it was the don't best come thing. around here until you're clean. It was the best thing for me. My wife needed to take, we have a four-year-old girl at the time she was three. She needed to take her away because right. people were coming to look for me. And I was, like you said, if it wasn't bolted down, I was taking it, right. you know. And These <laughs> items, obviously, that she's suing you about, the purse, you did all this? I have no idea. I, okay. I really, I don't know. And that's how bad it got. I was so... Well, that looked like you to me. Yeah. <laughs> I well, have an idea. I don't know. That guy looked pretty handsome up there. I have, have an me. idea it was you. <laughs> but I just, I just want to, um, please, if, I'm, if I just might add, mm -hmm. that the suffering that I endured was nothing compared to what, you know, I was causing other people. And clearly I was, I was affecting other people's lives. Uh, and it wasn't until I had nobody else to cry out to that, uh, you know, I had to I had to cry out to somebody that I couldn't even see. You know, I, I honestly had to cry out to God who may have may or may not be the only one that actually cared anymore and said, look, I made a mess of this. I don't want it anymore. You can have it. Okay. You're the most honest recovering drug addict I've had on here and that I know most um, recovering drug addicts, even as they recover, they act like they haven't really destroyed lives. And I know I've had you raise my child for me and never gave you a dime. In fact, whenever you gave my child something, I'd come over and take it and pawn it. I know I destroyed your life. I know I stole all the other things. But I'm clean now. Don't hold that against me. You destroy folks' lives. So I'm glad you recognize and acknowledge that. Uh, and we're going to have to grant her her money and some emotional distress. As you say, you worried uh, all night, in fact, a couple of days, whether the person who had your house keys and your car keys was coming in. 5000 is your judgment. Have a good day. I'm glad it's finally over. I am as well. Thank you. God bless you. And you.